In this video, we are doing a first impressions of these, the Kraft CTM Ultra 2. people and welcome to 40 runs hq how are we all doing let me know in the comments and why you're down there tell me have you listened to the long run podcast yep we've got a cheeky little podcast that's ended up being like one of the biggest in the uk so make sure you check that out i think that's on like all the podcast providers whatever it is amazon apple all that kind of stuff make sure you check it out and let me know in the comments was that a good plug i think it was okay right so anyway you're here hopefully because you want to find out about these the ctm ultra 2 now this is a new brand to me and these shoes were bought by my own money just so you know uh basically i took the money that i got back from the nike street fly and i plowed it in to these uh this video is the first impressions uh i've done two runs um no sorry three runs i should get it right three runs uh three runs <laughs> three runs over 20 miles, um, but I wanted to let you know after your feedback on Instagram um, in terms of first impressions. So let's get stuck in. Okay, people, so why did I buy this? Well, firstly, because I wanted to check it out, and secondly, because Alan said, have you tried these shoes? That's basically why. And he messaged me and said, have you seen the stuff from CTM? And I have seen the shoes from CTM. I know there's been a, quite a few reviews of the older models. Now that you've got... Um, like a carbon plate version of this. This is not the carbon plate, this is just the CTM Ultra 2. There's a carbon plate version of this and they do a trail version of this. And there's a few other var variations of the shoes from Kraft, but I wanted to go with the CTM Ultra. Why? Because we've got this, uh, and I'll come on to it, we've got this high rebound durable midsole um, here with quite a high stack height with a very good outsole relatively lightweight we'll come on to the weight in a minute but sort of set up in that daily trainer long run setup bear with me um so yeah so i wanted to stick the money from the nike streak fly because i had 135 quid these are 125 pounds um, i wanted to take that money and put into something i could use in my rotation in 2022 so that's why we have the shoe on the channel today Okay, let's do stats and features. Let's get them out of the way first. So the shoe is 125 pounds. Uh, it doesn't have a plate in it. It's not got a carbon plate like its older brother. Uh, we've got a very high stack height in the heel of 40 millimeters. Uh, the shoe's got a 10 mil drop. Uh, we've got the UD foam in there. Uh, which is a high rebound, super durable uh, compound from the guys at Kraft. We've got the Ultra Track outsole, uh, which has got a uh, quite a, a lug profile, I would say in it, but a low profile as well. So I'll come on to that in a sec. Uh, fits true to size. We've got the super lightweight uh, engineered mesh on the shoe. Uh, does it gusseted the tongue? No, it's not gusseted on. Uh, yes, it is. Sorry, gusseted tongue. Uh, there's hardly any padding around uh, the heel, but there is a little bit just in by the ankles. You won't see it because of the colorway just to help with lockdown. Plenty of room for me in the toe box. No issues in terms of fit on the shoe. It does sort of gather up if you look. Um, there's plenty of uh, movement in the upper, which I actually quite like because it doesn't feel restrictive in any way. Um, there's the outsole. So you've got this, yeah, like luck design. So you could, you can go, and this is designed to go from road to light trail, um, which is perfect for me. And the reason, one of the reasons, and again, I joke about Alan, but uh, because of the work we do down the canal towpaths, this in terms of grip is perfect for me, especially this time of year where we're venturing back onto the towpaths where we've been off of them because of the winter where it's been muddy and stuff um, and yeah, basically underwater, we're now able to get down there. So these are perfect for me in terms of the grip. Um, you've got a bit of exposed uh, UD there. Uh, 40 mil, I spoke about 10 mil drop. I think that's about it. Oh, let's do the weight. So I've got Mrs. Foley scales in the drawer here. Hang on. Oh. I kept them up here because I was doing some videos the other day and I thought if I put them back, then she'll clean them and stuff like that. So don't tell I kept them. 281 grams, UK nine and a half people. 9.9 .9 ounces. All right, it's not light, but 
this is for me is, is venturing into daily trainer long run shoe territory. So under 10 ounces is a winner. So yeah, so this shoe for me is uh, in the rotation for those longer runs. I'm in marathon training mode and I'm putting in longer miles and I wanted a shoe that I can do on longer miles and transition to faster paces, i.e. goal pace. This shoe ticked a lot of boxes from that because of the uh, feedback from other YouTube people, reviews and stuff like that with the UD compound in terms of the uh, rebound from it and the setup of it. Um, it just seemed to be like sort of ticking boxes in terms of giving me the confidence to run easy, but also the confidence to pick it then up to goal pace. And that's what I found on the 16 mile run I did in these. So we've done two uh, different runs, shorter runs, three miles each. Uh, one was a recovery run, one was sort of a mixed pace run uh, around about goal pace. And the longer run was at 16 miles at easy pace um, because I'm not putting any uh, goal pace work into those longer runs at the moment as I recover. Um, but what I, so what I wanted this shoe to do is be able to take the easy miles, but then be able to take it up if I want to into that transition and move into goal pace. So uh, even though I wasn't meant to be doing it in the 16 miles, I did pick it up into goal pace occasionally just to see what the shoe was like. And like I said, I've done three miles at goal pace anyway, so that worked out. Um, it was super comfortable and I'm trying to get it out because, yeah, I thought so. The, oh, where is it? Look at that. In terms of the insole, it comes extra cushioning. It is so soft in the um, the insole thing here. It just feels, yeah, for, uh, yeah, for, yeah, here's, it just feels so comfortable. You could, the step in um, feel of the shoe when you put it on, it just feels really comfortable when you put it on, a nice place to be. And it immediately makes me feel happy when I go out on my run. I'm gonna weigh this now when I've taken that out. What did I say it was? Just under 10 ounces. I've taken that out. 8.55, interesting though. No? So that is 1.25 ounces, that thing. So it just shows you they've given you that for comfort, but they could take that out or you know make it smaller or wear it thinner, or whatever. Um, to shave weight, but they've not they've given you that because it's this shoe is instead of like the the uh, carbon plate version, this is meant to be for like sort of daily use or for for every use, and that's why I think the matchup for me, just after three runs, I'm already thinking, okay, what else can I do in the shoe? And it makes me excited um, because uh, I don't know, it's it's kind of and I'm getting well ahead of myself here, people, as always, right? But it's kind of like dare I say it, like a bit like, might take the place of the Speed 2 in the rotation. I know, right? And this is from the guy who's like, the Speed 2 is the best shoe ever made. I said, oh, Saucony Speed 2, by the way. But the Saucony Speed 2 is hands down the best shoe you could buy for money, right? If it works for you. But it does have unstable elements to it, right? So for example, the Run Shield version is really unstable. It's so much softer. Um, but the Speed 2, and Cy si will tell you that, because you know, Cy si runs with us, he finds it really soft. This thing is, even though you've got like 40 mil of stack in the heel, it's, it's not soft. And it's just, for me, this is me talking, it's just the nice blend. Now this doesn't have a plate in it. Now I wonder, Craft, what this would be like if you put a TPU plate in it. I wonder if you then have a proper speed, uh, speed two, speed three sort of competitor here. I'm not sure. I don't know. You could do, you know, because this is the sort of perfect blend for me in terms of compound that's working. And again, I totally appreciate this is only after three runs and I'm getting excited as always about after three runs. Right. Okay. I get that. And I'll come back. We'll do the performance review. I'll take you out on a longer run and all that kind of stuff and let you know how I go on with it. But I don't know. It just... Yeah, it's kind of, yeah, it's got me kind of, it's got me kind of, yeah, feeling like, mm, speed two, maybe I'll take them out, you know? It's, it's that kind of thing. Now, I've been using my Pro 2s, and uh, I, I keep saying, Saucony Pro 2s and Saucony Pros, on my longer runs that are meant to be at goal pace um, in the last training block and things like that. And I'm wondering now, because I know the Pro 3 that's coming out is more going to be focused on the marathon. I'm wondering whether I should then get the sort of, carbon plate version of these let me know in the comments if you've used that 
Um, in terms of the grip, because uh, uh, it's one of the things that they're sort of famous for, um, I've not ran these in the rain, okay? So I don't know. I, I saw some comments about that these are no good version one in the rain. I can't comment on that because I've not run them in the rain. Uh, all I can say is the stuff that I've been running on uh, in the last three days, absolutely fine, no problem at all. Uh, done exactly what I wanted it to do. And it actually felt grippy and it felt meaty underfoot um, on some of those paths that we were running on. So that ticked the boxes. So yeah, to conclude, excited to see where we go with it. Needs obviously more miles in it. Going to be wearing it on the long runs uh, as we go through the, the different rotations, 16, 18, 20 miles. See how we get on. Uh, very interested in your feedback, please. If you've got the first version, I want to know, because they talk about durability of the midsole. Very interested to know um, how they've held up over time. If you're one of these nuts like Andy Forrest of Dean, check out his channel, who's done do like 3,000 miles in their shoes. Let me know how it's you know held up. Very interested to know um, in terms of durability. Uh, I know they're a small Swedish company, um, so very interested to know in terms of the quality of the shoe. Let me know. How they've been getting on? Okay, I think that's it. Um, Alan, I think you should check them out, just as a, a heads up to you. Uh, I know it's only three runs, bruv, but definitely grab the, there was a, like a pair, white pair with like pink and uh, yellow, different colors on them. That's probably why uh, he was looking at them, more importantly. But yeah, I think uh, first impressions, super interested to see where we go with them. I don't wanna say any more than that. As always, I get super excited on the channel about shoes, um, but I will tell you if it's rubbish or not. But this is uh, an interesting shoe that's caught me off guard. I wasn't expecting it um, to fit in where it's fitting in. And as I say, with the comparisons versus the Speed 2. So let's see. Where are we going? I will report back, people. So that's it. Hope you're well. Let me know in the comments how you're doing. I'll catch you guys later.